So for everybody online, we're just getting ready to come back from the break. Um, there is a question online, and Rob is going to do a quick demo here. So Rob, you are welcome to go ahead. Thanks, Brandon. So we've had a question about how to make a chamfered cylinder. And so I'm going to try and do that real quick with a stack. Uh, so this has been in the in the forum. So this is the stack component, which is just a stack of cross sections. And um, so it's it's really easy to do, uh, assuming I understand what they mean by a chamfered cylinder. The tricky part is you have to turn off skinning. So to turn off skinning, we come to the skinning tab on the stack and we control it on a per cross section basis. This won't be a full deep dive on it, but we want the symmetry all the way around. We want the same. We want to turn off setting both sides equal, and then we want to turn off setting them at all. So those are the steps you take to turn off skinning at one cross section. And then unfortunately, we have to go and do this all the way through. So then we go to the next cross section, turn on symmetry, turn off equals, turn off set. Go to the next cross section, symmetry equals set. Next section, symmetry equals set. And final cross section, symmetry, turn off equals, and set. So now skinning is off. And so it's just going to be straight line lofting between sections. We'll come back. The first cross section is a point all the way to the beginning. That's a point. So we'll go to the next one. Since we wanted a cylinder, I'll make it a circle. We'll just make it a diameter of one. And we'll go to the next one and we'll make it a circle. And we'll make it a diameter of one. And we'll go to the next cross section and uh, we'll delete that one. And so now we have you know, something that, depending on your definition, is starting to look like a chamfered cylinder. We've chamfered all the way to a point. Those aren't 45 degrees. So now what we want is we have a diameter of one, but the distance in X, the delta X between the point and that is one. So if we make that equal to the radius, we'll make that 0.5. Now at least it's 45 degrees, which still may not be what they mean by a chamfer. So next what we'll do is we'll come back to this point and we'll say, okay, let's make it a circle as well and say we'll increase its diameter to uh, 0.5, why not? And then we'll know that the change, if this is 0.5 and this goes to one, then the change in, in radius there is 0.5. So I think to make that work, we need our, there we go, that's a 45. So we created that chamfer on the front. With the problem, since we made the front an open surface, we uh, we made it open. So we can either go back and insert a point and make it a, a insert a cross section, make it a point, or we can go to the design tab and we can change the nose cap type to flat. And so that will close off that nose cap. We could also do something like put on a round button nose, which will make it a portion of a sphere. But um, the easiest thing there is to just make it flat. And so that's how I would make a chamfered cylinder. Let me check the comments here to see where we stand. So hopefully Keith, that, that answers your question there. So Daniel, unfortunately, um, we've had a question about um, clustering along the fuselage and it can jump at cross sections it mostly the jump comes in um when you have a significant change in strength before and after the cross section so if you change the tangent strength before and after that can really throw your your uh, spacing off if your spacing is the same on the top bottom left right curves sort of circum circumferentially around you can actually use the clustering in inverse proportion to the tangent strength jump to get a uniform spacing. Um, so that's a, that's a nice trick is that if you have, say, let's just come in here and we'll have to turn cross skinning back on, but let's say we're at this section and let's, uh, let's turn it on on the left and we're gonna change the strength here something you know really we'll make it really really small so that we have you know very non-uniform spacing and on the other side we'll set it there and we'll make that strength very very big so we have you know really 
really non-uniform spacing at this jump. What I can do, and, and I'm going to make it round numbers just so it's easier to deal with. So we'll make it 0.25. And so we also have the difference in X that we're also dealing with. But what you can do is you can come back in here to this cross section um, and you know, on now we're dealing with this section. And so we can change the clustering that's on the forward side. Let's leave that at one. But since this one was four times as much, what we can do is we can set this clustering to four and that will do what it can to try and make this more uniform. And you'll notice the first and the last are the same. So we can, we can try and adjust some of that out. We can go to the next cross section and now we're on this one and so the before if we change its forward clustering to point one again the inverse of what we had before maybe that's too much maybe maybe i'm maybe i'm off on that but you can see that you can you can use the the clustering sort of inversely to the tangent strength to try and adjust that spacing so we don't have a full-blown structured mesh generator that um that can do much more than that brandon i'm going to turn it back over to you Hopefully that helped.